let's now get into an example. We're going to deal with the measurement of these awards, both upon initial measurement, and I'm going to show you a few tricks for subsequent measurement along with the change in estimate. Okay, so let's have a look at our information. In year one, we awarded 100,000 points. Okay, so the obvious points if we were British Airways. The fair value per award at that point equals 5 cents per point. In year one, 25,000 points were redeemed. So people came and used 25,000 obvious points to purchase tickets. Total expected redemption that rate is 70% of the 100,000. Okay, that's very important to note. We'll deal with that just now. Year two, we had a total of 15,000 redemptions and we changed the total estimated redemption to 65%. There is a change when I do a delta sign, a triangle like that, that means change in estimate. Remember IAS 8, change in estimates are counted for prospectively this year going forward. We don't go backwards. Okay, so let's have a look now. So journals in year one, you are going to go, let's assume we did sales in cash, but let's go debit, bank, or trade receivables possibly. We didn't know what those figures were, so I'm just putting in XX. Okay, what we did know, however, is that we credited deferred revenue from the customer loyalty points. And that is going to be a liability in the statement of financial position. Okay, the balancing figure will be revenue in profit or loss. Okay, so that'll be the balancing figure in this journal. But now I want to work out, how did you go and work out the deferred revenue? So the calculation here will be the number of points times the fair value per point. And in this example, we had 100,000 points and they were sold at 5 cents per point or fair value to five cents per point, which equals 5,000. Now that might be $5,000 rands, the currency which you're working in, right? So that's gonna be 5,000. Now, at the end of the year, you're going to start redeeming some of these, right? So when the points are redeemed, you are going to go debit deferred revenue And you're going to go from statement of financial position to revenue when the points are redeemed in profit or loss. Okay, so that is going to be when the points are redeemed. Okay, the trick is how much? Okay, so here we're going to take the total deferred revenue. I'm just going to go DR for deferred revenue, just because I'm running out of space there, times by the points redeemed during the year, divided by the total estimated redemption. Okay, so not divided by the 100,000, not the total points, but the total number of points we estimate will actually be redeemed. So in this calculation here, we are taking the 5,000 total deferred revenue times by the points that were redeemed in year one, remember, which is 25,000. And that is all going to be divided by the 100,000 times 70% that we expect the total estimated redemption to be. So that throws up a figure of 1785. Okay. Now at the same time, remember, you are going to have a related cost of sales. And let's assume we're selling our own goods. It'll therefore come out of inventory. Okay, we don't know what the cost of these items that we're selling are going to be. Okay, so very important. The trick I'm trying to show you is that we are using the total 
estimated redemption, not the actual 100,000 total points to pro rata buy. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Next up, let's have a look at year two. The current year redemption, we have another 15,000 points being redeemed. The cumulative up to this date now are 25,000 from year one, 15,000 from year two being the current year. We have a total cumulative points redeemed of 40,000. We also had a change in total estimated redemption from 70% to 65%. Okay, so what's our calculation going to be? The amount that's going to be redeemed will once again be the 5,000 total deferred revenue times by, now I'm doing this cumulatively note, okay, 40,000 over 100,000 times, in brackets, times 65%, being the 65,000, okay, and that is the current year amount, okay, the amount that's going to be cumulative. I have to still remove from that last year's balance and all the movements up to the year, 1785, which gives me the 1291 movement for the year, right? Okay, so over here I'm going to go debit deferred revenue, making the liability smaller with 1291, and I'm going to credit revenue in profit or loss, recognize the revenue 1291. Take note, I have now brought in the new change in estimate in this year's closing balance, cumulative balance. I then deduct last year's balance to give me the current year movement. That incorporates a change in estimate into this current year. I don't go back to prior year, year one, and restate that figure at all. Okay, this should give you some good guidance. Please, please, please do some examples. Do not lose the basic principles when dealing with EFRIC 13. This is still revenue, just being accounted for as a separate component of revenue. Thank you. Mm -hmm.